Okay. These are words that you can hear in the movie Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, the second movie. Please, if you have some time, if you get some time, check out Ant-Man and the Wasp. If you are a language learner, maybe you'll catch these words in the movie. You know, why not? Give it a try. Okay. Um, one of the words you hear is wardrobe, right? And Scott has a joke, uh, do you mean that really tall dresser? So in the beginning of the movie, um, what's it, Hope, the wasp is playing, uh, she's playing um, hide and go seek with her mother, and she's hiding in the wardrobe, right? So, you know, here, this is a dresser, this is kind of a modern wardrobe, so Scott calls it, <laughs> he didn't know the word wardrobe, <laughs> so he says, you mean really tall dresser? This wardrobe is also the, uh, the movie Narnia, the Chronicles of Narnia, as the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, and in that movie, the children walk into it, and they find, uh, you know, a magical world. Settled in, um, settled in for the night. Settled in just means ready, but ready for bed. Like this couple, they're, uh, we're all settled in. They're not going out for the night. These guys too, they're all settled in to watch a movie. Ready is more like, you know, you're going to play sports. Your coach says, you need to be in the ready position. You got to be in the ready position. But settled in just means relaxed and, uh, um, you know, ready for bed. Settle down is calm down, right? and or have a relaxing life someday i'm going to settle down and get married buy a house stop traveling too much at stake there's too much risk too much to lose in the beginning of the movie because ant-man and uh, no no dr pym and his wife they're on this missile and uh he says something like we've got too many lives it's we got too much at stake too many lives at stake to go sub uh, subatomic it's just too much, too much at stake. Some people don't quit their jobs and pursue their career because there's just too much at stake. They don't want to lose their family. They don't want to lose their house. Right. I like this, or should I say this one? So, for example, let's say there's a this guy, Dr. Jekyll, but I know his true identity, who he truly is. So I say, should I, or hello, Dr. Jekyll, or should I say, Mr. Hyde? Dust off is also in there. I dusted off these old plans. Dr. Pym has some uh, blueprints or some plans to build this machine. So he says, uh, you know, after Scott, um, after Scott went subatomic in the last movie, he says, uh, I dusted off these old plans. Right. You can also use this for other things. Wow, I haven't been dancing in a while. I'm going to dust off my dancing shoes and uh, go to the party. I'll need to dust off my old dancing shoes. Why? Because, you know, when you're dusting, you're cleaning, you get things ready. Hang up the phone. Do you still play hockey? Nope, I've hung up uh, my skates. Actually, hang up the phone's a different thing, but the opposite of dusting off is you hang up. Do you play hockey? Nope, I'm going to, I've hung up my hockey skates. If you want to start playing again, you'd say I dust them off. But this one is hang up the phone. All right. Are you afraid? No way. I eat fear for breakfast. The little girl says this when um, they're in the house with that roller coaster, uh, the cardboard roller coaster. Why are you so afraid? I do that every day, and it's easy. Um, we use this. This is kind of common. It's in a lot of movies. Like, uh, this, and this one's kick-ass. Jim Carrey says, I used to eat punks like you for breakfast right before he's going to fight. Or in baseball, somebody says, oh, that guy has a fast, uh, a good fastball. Are you afraid? Um, no, I eat fastballs for breakfast. Hey, there's the manager. Are you afraid? The team junk name? Nope. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> um, and that was from the word or the, in this scene with the cardboard at the cardboard box, and Scott has a roller coaster for his daughter. Show and tell. I don't know if they play this in Korea. I've asked people, um, and I get different answers. But you know, kids bring something, and they 
they you know show it to the class and they describe it and they tell why they like it so the little girl scott's little girl um wants to bring her uh, her trophy her dad's trophy <laughs> best grandma trophy for show and tell land that bird wait a minute is that a ship or a plane or if you're landing a plane you say watch me land this bird thing turn a corner in life scott used to be a thief he used to steal things but he's really he's really turned a corner in life right um or something big happens to you he used to be an alcoholic and then he met this girl and he really turned a corner in life he, he turned a corner in life he stopped drinking and started going to church uh, the little girl, the little girl, this is also in the scene with uh, Scott, says uh, Popo, okay? <laughs> Popo is police. <laughs> Scott's like, where'd you hear that, I think? Um, call the Popo. You'll hear it's very slang, very gangster. Usually we say, um, this this guy, I think this is, uh, Jim, the character's name is Jimmy Woo, but he's played by Randall Park, which sounds Korean. Um but for when the FBI is searching Scott's house, he'll say, usually we say from top to bottom, you know, search the house from top to bottom. Hey, we cleaned everything. We cleaned the house from top to bottom. Um, but he he uses this term, Keyless Stern soup to nuts, which is just weird or kind of quirky. But that's that guy's character. Anyway, he's a super good Christian type of guy, um, but he his phrases are kind of funny. Right? Uh, I think the uh, the mother says this to about Scott. You know, you can't just or about the F, to the FBI. You can't just show up and search the place. Come on, they have to have a warrant. Let's paint the town red. Paint the town red. Um, this one means go out and have a party, right? I guess in Korea you could say that here. Here they often ask like, what is Bulgum? Um, Fire Friday. Okay, fine, but usually we, I'd use a verb. I'm going to go out and paint the town red. Ooh, going to this, uh, this area, to each day one, going to paint the town red. Um, it's also in this Clint Eastwood movie. I don't remember the name of it right now, but they paint the entire re town red, maybe to look like hell. Or maybe he's going to have his party or revenge. Um, and my coworker said just the other day, uh, I don't really use that. That sounds, uh, that sounds old or a bit dated. But um, it's used sometimes. Maybe on a scale of 1 to 10, it's about a 3 or 4. A walk in the park. Easy peasy. Scott says this. Easy peasy. No worries. That's a walk in the park. A walk in the park. Piece of cake. It's all easy. Why? Because going for a walk in the park is easy. I think in Spain they say pan comida. Eating bread. Eating bread. Here they say it like this in, Korea, in Korean. Chicken chukmuki. Um... We just say easy peasy. Pinpoint, you know, Google Maps is good, but it can't. On my phone, I it can't. It doesn't always pinpoint my exact location. Or neighbor does that sometimes too. It says like within a few meters. Archaeologists use this. Map makers use this for a split second, for just a moment. My friend went on a sightseeing tour to see whales, um, but. The whale's tail was only, it was only available. You could only see it for just a split second. The gist. The gist is the main point, right? Or the summary. The main idea. Uh, it doesn't look like you get the gist of this game, I think they say. Or you go to a meeting and you say, I didn't understand everything that, that they said in the, in the meeting, but I did get the gist of it. Still a work in progress. Remember, Ant-Man's suit, the new suit, doesn't work all the time. He keeps having problems with it. Work in progress is usually construction. Um, oh, that runway's closed at the airport. They gotta, there's a work in progress there. There's construction workers there. But Ant-Man uses it several times, I think three times, about the suit. Right. Hey, this suit still isn't working correctly. It's a piece of junk. No, 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 no. It's not a piece of junk. It's still a work in progress. I like that when Scott, this is a great joke, because Scott says, like, uh, those were the days. What happened to us? Because they just kind of became a couple, right? 
But usually old couples say this, because later in life they're not very happy. So they say, remember our college days? Those were the days. What happened to us? How did we change? Um, in your hour of need, I will call you in my hour of need. This is from like the Hail Mary for the Catholic Church. Hail Mary, full of grace, blessed art, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. Pray for us now and at the hour of our need, like when you go before God. Right. Like the real time you need somebody. Why are you upset with your friend? Well, he didn't, she didn't help him. She didn't help me in my hour of need. He didn't help me in my, in my hour of need. Okay, bigger fish to fry. This expression is quite common. Um, I got bigger fish to fry. I can't do that now. I've got more important things to do. Or people are complaining, and you, you know you want to choose the best, the most important complaint. Okay, that's good. That that's fine. That complaint is okay. But we have bigger fish to fry. We got to focus on this. I think it's mostly an American expression. You snooze, you lose. This means you wait too long, you uh, you lose things. You want a job, but you wait too much. So then you try to apply, but they say, "No, I'm sorry, job's closed." You snooze, you lose. It's just an expression. Mm. Um, people are eating cake. I want, to, but I'm busy working. I go in later. I say, "Hey, where's the cake? You guys ate it all?" Yeah, sorry, man. You snooze, you lose. You should have gotten here earlier. You should have gotten here sooner. Right. Rummage sale. These are like garage sales or yard sales in the U.S. Often people sell their their Secondhand items, you know, and it might be in the garage or outside. This is a map of you know people here, maybe mostly saying garage sales. Here, people saying yard sales. Um, some people say rummage sale. Right? I've seen it before, and I live lived here. Goliath. I put this in here for the pronunciation. Goliath. <laughs> um, you know, this is a match between David and Goliath. Remember from the Bible, there was the good hero David, and he's very—he's just a small shepherd boy, and he fights this large giant. Right. Stick it out means don't quit. Stick it out to the end. Right. I want to quit the program. No, you got to stick it out. Don't quit. Stick it out to the end. I think it comes probably from races because, you know, look at these guys. They're running. At the very end, they really stick their neck, stick their foot out, maybe, to try to win. Pay to play. If you go to Las Vegas, you can't just, you know, play poker for free. You got to put money in. It's pay to play. Fired and discredited. This comes in here. Lawrence Fishburne's character uh, says this um, because Dr. Pym didn't like him, so he got he got him fired. He got this guy fired, and then on top of that, on top of getting fired, he got him discredited. So let's say there's a scientist, right? And that scientist, they, they get me fired. But that's not enough. They get them discredited. So now none of the other scientists will invite, invite me to their conferences. It's terrible. Um, this is a joke that Luis talks about. In uh, the, you know, you don't wash the undercarriage of a car. No, no, I, I, actually you do. If you live in a very cold state like Minnesota or in Canada, those areas have a lot of snow. Those areas have a lot of snow. And you need to wash the undercarriage of the car because there's salt on it. And the salt will rust your car. But normally people in California don't, California doesn't really need that because they're not putting salt on the roads. But some car washing places try to steal your money, rip you off, you know, they try to scam you. You can also call it the underbelly or underside of the car as well. Right. Truth serum. This is uh, this is comes up twice, you know, and, and it's in a lot of movies too. So they give you this injection, and it makes you tell the truth. Sodium pentothal, I think, is the chemical. Um, but there's kind of a thing that doesn't really exist, you know. <laughs> All right. I'm in a bad place. Scott says this. This is usually used by an alcoholic, right? How's that guy doing? Well, he's really in a bad place. Or if you're talking about like how bad your life is, this is Philip Seymour Hoffman, I think. Um, 
I'm saying it, but a few years, he was addicted to heroin. He had a heroin addiction. And he was in a really bad place, and nobody knew or nobody really helped him, or nobody was able to help him. Keep your chin up. This is uh, from Jumanji. Um, Robin Williams says this to the little boy because he's crying. Come on, keep your chin up. It means cheer up or, you know, come on, cheer up now. It's usually used if people are sad. Remember, you can do it, rock on, go for it. This is like for sports, like fighting, we say here in Korea. Jukebox. There are, I don't, actually, here in Seoul, I haven't seen many jukeboxes. I'm sure they exist in some restaurant or something. Um, by the way, this is Fonzie. This has come up in several movies. I've talked about it with Koreans. Um, most don't know him, but, you know, he's, he's this really cool character. Wears leather jackets. Um, and he always hits the jukebox and the music plays. The boogeyman. The boogeyman is some is a he doesn't exist. It's a person or a scary thing that doesn't exist that children talk about. Right. There's no such thing as the boogeyman. Maybe in Spain they call it the hombre hombre del saco, but really you know there's no such thing as the boogeyman. Kids say this like kids are in the window. They say, "Mom, outside I see the boogeyman." Boogeyman is also used in political discussions because politicians try to scare the people. The terrorists are coming. And so other politicians disagree and they say, you know, that's just, that's just a boogeyman. You're just using that to scare people. So two meanings there. Right, uh, here we go. Sorry. Muir Woods. I hope um, this, or that's the way we say it in the Midwest maybe we don't know but these they have these big redwood trees its location is uh, just on the other side just not too far from San, San Francisco just outside from San Francisco so you drive up the up the over the Golden Gate Bridge up this highway here highly recommended one of the one of the beautiful places this is this is where uh, towards the end of the movie in Ant-Man they have this that's where they hide the factory or the the lab under house arrest, Scott is under house arrest. That's why he keeps having trouble. This is used for politicians. You know, they put this ankle bracelet on and they keep them under house arrest. Pocken Hay, the former president, was under house arrest here. Look at us squabbling. Squabbling is fighting a little bit, like a couple. <laughs> Would you guys stop squabbling? Um, vomit. Tohada, we talk about this is uh, the Korean. Barf, puke, throw up, vomit. He barfed, he puked, he threw up, he vomited. Barf is very informal. The little girl says it at the end when Scott is in the bathroom. He's barfing. Right. Um, fed a bunch of malarkey, feed a bunch of uh, malarkey. Malarkey is just, you know, BS, bullcrap, uh, hot air, things that are not true. Um, so, yeah, actually... The government. <laughs> if you say to the government officials, that is not true, you are giving me a bunch of malarkey. Now, this word is, I think it's more American. Um, I don't use it. I use it on a scale of 1 to 10, it's about a 3 or 4. The boss asked you where you were, and I covered for you. Cover means protect, right? So this guy, this guy's attacking, this guy protects him. I'll cover for you. But cover for often used in companies. Hey, the boss asked why you were late, but don't worry, I covered for you. I told him that you were in the bathroom. Take the scenic route, two meanings. If you come to Seoul, you know, if you just stay at the airport or if you just visit a friend, that's great. But really, you should just take the scenic route, go all around Seoul. The second meaning of take the scenic route is if the taxi driver doesn't drive directly to your destination. The taxi driver, you know, one time we were in Gangnam and we wanted to go to Hongdae, but the taxi driver went all the way up here <laughs> to over through Jongno and then over, which is possible, but we said, sir, why are we, you know, we were here, why are we in Jongno? Because <laughs> I think he was taking the scenic route. It means take, uh, okay. my ass, my ass means just like, Ande, no way. Um, Scott is trying to use the suit, and uh, I shouldn't have to. <laughs> Scott is trying to use the suit, and it, it keeps, it's not working. And Dr. Pym told him, it's a work in progress. Come on, it's good. 
And, and Scott says, that, yeah, work in progress, my ass, means no way. So maybe I like the Busan Giants, and I say, hey, the Busan Giants baseball team, they are the best. And somebody like a Kia Tigers fan says, oh, the Giants are the best, Pfft, my ass. My rear, my, my arse. Um, this is kind of a curse word, so I wouldn't say it. But, right. You little weasel. Joke to be here. But weasel is somebody you can't trust, or they try to, like, hide or lie. You'll never get away with it. This is common in movies all the time. The bad guy says, you'll never escape. Thieves got away with a computer. They stole it. Um, what was it? 30, 40 years ago, there was a guy who hijacked a plane. They sent a message to the FBI um, to to give them money when he when he when he landed. The passengers got off. The plane took off again, and then the guy parachuted out of the plane um, at a very high altitude, and he got away. With, he got away with all the money. He escaped. Did they ever catch that guy? No, he got away with it. All right. You don't have enough flair. Flare are um, shiny things that, like, someone has a phone cover and you say, whoa, that's a lot of flare, like, kind of exciting. Whoa. Um, this is common, like, you know, in uh, TGI Fridays or maybe Applebee's or some places, they wear these buttons, and they call them flare. Maybe if somebody comes to work and they're wearing, like, bright pink or purple. Oh, you got a lot of flare today, huh? And they, and they have energy. You know, a plain, boring phone case, not cool. But if you have a case like this, you know, you got flair. I'm with you till the end of the line. I will be your friend forever. I'm with you till the end of the line. My friend has cancer. I say, hey, I'm going to stay here. I'm not leaving you. I'm with you till the end of the line. This also is used in Captain America Winter Soldier. So, all right. So, hopefully, listen, go to the movie, maybe without subtitles, try to catch it. Catch those words if you can. If not, uh, the people who have used this, they say they listen to it two or three times, then they go watch the movie, then they go review this again. So best of luck.